Hello my friends, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for spending some of your time here with me in this video. This is going to be a face routine that utilizes just two brushes and a powder puff. <laughs> um, I don't know how I really ran into this idea the other day, but I realized I have a couple of brushes. Yes, they are double-ended. They're so multi-purpose. This can pretty much be my whole face. This can be my whole eye look. And I think that's kind of valuable, you know? I think about like streamlining the routine, almost the way I I would consider a full face palette to be a quicker way to like boom, 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 go around and do your whole face. Less fumbling for a lot of different brushes can I think speed up the process from that end as well. Um, this could be handy for people who are traveling, people who are starting out with makeup and just don't want to have to get a ton of different brushes. These can be extremely multitasking and if you were going to do a number of different face powder steps, powder blushes, powder bronzers, stuff like that, you might pull in an additional brush for that. But I'm going to show you just how multi multitasking these brushes can be. There are a couple of my absolute favorites, one from e.l.f. and one from Persona. So we're going to get started. Um, I've already got my face all prepped and sunscreened. I will do some primer today. I'm going to reach for my e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter in the shade 2. So this has its own little applicator. We can patch it around on the skin, but then I can use my e.l.f. It's called the Complexion Duo Brush. I can use that to blend it all in. Here we go. So this is a really soft brush. If you've not seen me use this before, I mean, I do use it a lot, but if you're new here, it has a nice density. The brush head definitely feels dense, but not too stiff. Um, it has enough mobility to really easily blend products out across the skin. Here you can see it totally made easy work of that primer. And can you use your fingers for a lot of steps? You can. So that's another tool that God gave you that you can just easily work with at any point in time. But if you'd like to be able to use brushes, this is a very easy brush option. Next up, I'm going to use a new foundation I've been experimenting with. It's the Revlon Illuminance uh, Skin Caring Foundation. It has 5% squalene and hyaluronic acid. I have this in the shade 213 Light Natural, and I found the whole range of these in my Walmart store. It was just within the Revlon display. So I've got one full pump of this and I'm just going to dab it around and this is only my second time using this one and it's a very light, very natural seeming foundation. So I'm using again my e.l.f. brush. One thing I really like to do with this is I can dab around um, I can take those dots of product and kind of move them a bit before I do my really intense buffing and blending, you know? This blends in very easily. Any liquid foundation can work well with this brush, even some creams. But in certain areas that you want to maintain more coverage, maybe you want to do a little bit more of a dabbing motion, like around the under eye but then you can do a bit more of a buff elsewhere on the skin. But see how we have a glow with this foundation? I would call it like a light to medium coverage. Maybe a little extra glowy because we put that e.l.f liquid filter underneath. But easy blending, two steps now with this brush. Next I'm going to grab out a concealer that I haven't used in a bit. This is my Sephora Best Skin Ever Full Coverage Multi-Use Concealer in 11.5P. So just a nice little doe foot applicator concealer. I'm going to give myself a couple dots on the inside, a little swipe out here. But I really do think the skin looks pretty with that Revlon on top. So glowy and surface of the skin feels lightly hydrated but not too dewy and sticky. So here's part of why this brush is absolutely golden. Using this smaller side and first using that to spread out your dots of concealer. So then when you do go to blend them in, I think they blend more evenly because they've been more evenly spread across your skin's surface. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not doing any blending right now. I'm just moving it around. I'm just spreading it out, those little dots, getting them everywhere. And then I can use this larger side and I find myself going over in a dabbing motion and then I'm just dabbing in what I spread out and maybe going into my little cavern here with the smaller end, you know, or sometimes I hit it with my finger because my finger has no product on it and it can kind of remove any excess there. But all in all, we're using our large side just to dab in what we spread out and it works beautifully. I think you'll start like re-enjoying or re-appreciating so many different concealers you have if you try this method. It really gives you nice even coverage and it spreads that coverage out over the surface area. And you still might want to use your little brush, like I said, for the small corners, small edges. It's just a great way to make the most of your concealer's coverage, I feel. Love that. And that's a good concealer and these face steps are coming together so well, but the brush, 
that Brush was able to do all of this so far. Then we're gonna bring in a puff. So these little puffs, I get them off of Amazon in like a six pack. Um, they clean up great. I'll just wash them in the sink along with my sponges and stuff. I have an e.l.f. like solid sponge cleaner thing. Do they still make that? I feel like I've had it forever. But just get it kind of soapy and then rinse it and leave it to dry and yeah, they clean up great. Um, I'm gonna use some of my new Hard Candy Stay and Slay powder. It's just translucent setting powder. I'm loving this. This really does well for staying power and also nice for little touch-ups too if you want to just add at some point in the day. Like I added a little bit to my T-zone yesterday and it didn't look cakey or too much. It's like a perfect little tone and a great in-betweener texture that's soft. Um, but not too soft, not as soft and buttery as you'd want a powder foundation to be. You don't want to be depositing tons of coverage on the skin, but you just want to set things and maybe perfect it a little bit more. So there's where the puff comes in. It's just so useful, and you'll see I not only use that on my under eye, but also my T-zone. Not gonna lie, I had a bit of a rough night last night. Bubba and I butted heads on something. Issue seems a lot more silly when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> but I was proud of myself because at first, I'm like one who immediately sinks my teeth into an argument, like I'll just start rare. But I didn't and I just kind of took my separate place and stayed quiet for a while but once we decided to start communicating it was clear that it was like too soon to try to do that I guess uh, but you know we deal with it it wasn't like some big long drawn out thing but then afterwards I just can't help but start sobbing <laughs> like I just I don't know if it's just the mental unloading of having been upset about something or knowing someone else was upset. No huge deal, but I just will say, like, arguments do happen, conflicts happen. Not everything is sunshine and cupcakes all the time, and that's okay, you know? Sometimes butting heads on something actually brings about resolution and better understanding. So just know that. It's not the end of the world, but I'm just being real with you. My eyes are a little puffy today because after I just like, mm. let's do some contour. I got out my Persona stick here. It's the bronze multi-stick and the shade is Sahara. And I do love this stick. I feel like I've loved it more as time has gone on because like the tone is just so good. And yeah, we're gonna be using that e.l.f. brush to handle all of this as well. I do a little bit down here and then like JLo says, get the light bulb. <laughs> I'm gonna take this side and it really is perfect for just blending over any kind of cream contour. Like you just buff over it. It's a great size, honestly. And if you're like, well, what if I have still some foundation or concealer on the brush? You can kind of wipe off the brush. It's not gonna make a huge deal. But look at this, blending with ease. I love that stick. It looks deep, but it, it's not scary. Okay, see that? We've got soft contour. Um, I could build this if I wanted to, but I'm kind of liking the softness of this look. Like, maybe I need a little more. That cheek has more. This one needs just a little bit more. I'm trying to stay symmetrical. There we go, I dig it. And now we're gonna move on to blush and we're gonna use the same brush. And if it makes you feel better, you know, you can wipe off that brush a little bit. It's not gonna interfere too much. M Cosmetics actually has two new shades of their So Soft stick. Um, they have a shade called Strawberry and it's not quite a pure red. It's kind of like a red mixed with a little coral. So that shade's really pretty. And then also Demure, let's look at that one. Kinda dusty, we're gonna do that one today. Look at that. Oh, talk about a good texture. The Persona sticks are really close to this texture. The M Cosmetics are just a teeny bit softer, but we're gonna go in with the same brush, my friends. Dabbing lightly. Look how pretty this, like, just soft rose. And they never really market the M Cosmetics sticks as both lip and cheek, but I imagine just for as creamy and nice as the texture is, it could be used on the lips. I personally have just never seen the brand really like go after them in that way or talk about them like that. So soft and pretty. I think I do want a little more though. A little more right in that zone. When I got this one, this demure shade, I thought, you know, they don't already have a color like that, but they really, it's a little different. It's really soft, but still blushy, you know? Look at us go. As I look at my face right now, I'm honestly not really feeling like, oh my gosh, I need to layer on some highlighter. But I totally could. Again, with the same brush, I would either pinch my big side or I could dot it on with a little bit of this or just press it in with my fingers, like several different options and still not pulling for a different brush. Now, let's say you just saw me do that cream contour and cream blush step and you're like, but Em, I don't ever reach for cream products. Then I would say a really good multitasking powder brush that can do several steps 
Steps is this um, Sephora 93. It's an angled brush and it works really well on contour, um, powder bronzer, things like that, but also very nice on blush and highlight too because you can make it take up only as much surface area as you want it to. Like let's say we wanted to just pick up highlight with this, you just use this zone of that brush, dip it into the product and just use that and you'll find it's very targeted. For those wanting to do powder steps here instead of creams, that's an extra brush you could pull in, but you know, just one extra brush. So I feel like the face is looking great right now, even though we've used some cream steps, things aren't feeling too terribly tacky and we did set our T-zone and under eye. So next we're just gonna hop over to the brows. This doesn't really require any extra brush, we're just pulling for a product. So the Brow Stylist Definer in Dark Brunette from L'Oreal is what I'm using today. I heard something, I think it was weeks ago. I wish I could remember where I picked this little nugget up from. But it's the degree to which you take things personally is an indicator of the amount of grace you're giving others. The degree to which you take things personally. So if you're having an argument and you're lumping all of what's happening that you don't like as something that's like coming at you personally or attacking you personally, that's an indicator that you may not be giving the other person a lot of grace. You could also say maybe you're not giving them a lot of understanding. When you start to give grace to that person, when you start to say, you know, I'm not gonna be so upset about this because I understand maybe they're going through something different on their end. I'm not gonna take this personally because I have a realization that what's coming out is a reflection of their own, you know, life experience that they've had or are having. And I can give them grace knowing maybe I don't fully understand even what they've been through or are going through, but I can give them grace in this moment and not take it so personally. I think this kind of goes for like internet step too. That was the way I first thought of this. People who talk to you online and say something, you know, really awful and you can sit there and, you know, internalize that and think, well, I, I must be awful. I must have to change 8,000 things about myself. You know, I want to be liked by this person. I want their approval. I must be a really, like, no good person out here on YouTube. You know, you can take that or you can not internalize so much and you can just know what comes out of that person is a reflection of what they've been going through. And this is not to say, like, oh, you can never be corrected, or you can never have constructive criticism, or you can never like hear something from somebody and take that and use that nugget to be better. That's not what I'm saying. It's more like instead of letting yourself feel really sulky and hurt over things. Thank you, Kathy. Hello, how are you? Love you, baby. How you doing? Okay. I don't even know where I was at. But I think it was just the overall thought that instead of getting all deep into problems, thinking everything's all about you. I mean, maybe that's the sum up here. It's not always all about you. Next time somebody says something hateful to you all online, just say, it's not all about me. I'm gonna use my hard candy uh, Teddy Brow, I think they called it. This is a really good product. Giving Grace. This seriously holds so well. Now I guess the part two of the look is using the eye brush. And I feel like several times over, you guys have seen me use this Persona. It's the Blend and apply brush for a full eye look. And why does this work? Well, this brush is great for putting color in the crease and also blending out, but this little flat brush, it's flat to an extent, but it's still got a little bit of fluff. So that kind of helps us in the outer corner as well. And I've also even used it underneath the eye. If I were to pull for an extra more specific brush, it might be the Smudge and Define. Great for inner corners, great for a little more targeted smudging. And this is an easy outer corner brush. So that's another recommendation from Persona, but if I had to only use one, it can easily be this. So we're gonna start out with Milani Eyeshadow Primer. I'm gonna have to tell some girls to sleep real quick. It's like a quarter after five, and they're thinking they're gonna be awake in there. Like they got their little light turned on, and they're just talking. Um, a palette that you've seen me use before on my channel that I kind of feel like diving into again. I love this Natasha Denona My Dream palette. It's so pretty. I love the shade selection in here. Really dark to matte to shimmer. Um, interesting shades, just fun. I'm gonna start out with my fluffy end of my brush. This is the blend side. And I'm gonna go into Unity right here. And it's kind of a peachy color. And I end up really liking to use this on like the border of my crease as well. But right now I'm picking that up. I'm just blending it, I would say sort of just above my crease as is right now. Easy buffing this brush, the size of it, especially if you've got some space between your crease and your eyebrow. 
this has helped me so much in just making use of that space. Um, you know, somebody who's great about utilizing space between the, her eye and her brow and just looking so fully blended, not like the look has stopped in a certain place, but like it's so beautifully buffed out. Anytime I see Marlena from Makeup Geek, I think, wow, you know, I love the way she utilizes the whole area between crease and brow and it always just looks so flawlessly buffed. So this is a soft shade, but can you see how I really used a lot of the space? Then uh, we can go up here, let's use Carpe Diem right up here. See how that's a little bit deeper than that one? Still with the fluffy brush and targeting it more to our crease. Sorry if the focusing is not like being our friend right now, but see there, deepening it up keeping it more to the outer corner. I'm not taking this all the way in. Now I'm gonna to go to my flat side here and I'm gonna go into one of the deeper shades. Let's go into um, Aspiration right here. It's nice deep brown. Pick some of that up and we're gonna begin dabbing on the outer lid to meet the crease. So I can feel that brush touching the crease as I apply. It always makes sense for the crease to have like some of the darkest intensity and so then I can turn my brush around so it was patting like this turning it taking that side that had the product on it and hitting the crease with that back forth dabbing look how pretty just this one little brush it's golden <laughs> it can pack on but it can also move it around and then if you're like okay like the look of that now let's blend a bit more Go back to good old fluffy side. <laughs> Neat, right? I so appreciate this brush and I feel like for any on the go people, people who are traveling, like it was one thing I guess to sort of introduce these brushes in that persona video and say, hey, I like these double-ended brushes, but this has been a fixture of nearly every video since then where I've done a full face or done an eye look. So I think that's saying something. So again, we're in that patted on the lid phase, feeling the color reach the crease and then turning the brush. And then it's really getting into that crease. And if you feel like whatever you're doing is not getting targeted to the crease enough, you can really go just head first into that shade and really get it on the tip. And then suddenly you're even more pinpointed with getting color to that crease. See how nice? And then again, blending, blending over the edge. Nothing else added to the brush at that moment, just blending over the edge. Okay, then wipe off the darkness. Let's pick a shimmer. There's so many pretty, like kind of spotlighty shades in here. I'm gonna use a little spontaneous down here and let's just add that to the inner lid. Oh, it's so pretty. It's such a soft shimmer, like just soft in texture, you know? And then, you see me kind of padding over that seam between the dark and where I stopped with that shimmer. Again, picking up a little bit. So easily applies super fully. You can dab over where they come together. That's really pretty. So then you can glance at your look and say, do I want kind of a tone shift on what's raising up out of the crease? We have this shade called Risk here, kind of a rusty shimmer. How about a little bit of that on our full brush and add a little bit of that. This is a really fun time to adjust your look. Sometimes it takes seeing what's on the lid to decide, okay, do I wanna do anything different with that crease now? You don't need to go hard into your pans of Natasha Denona product. And the pressure I'm applying to the skin is also soft. Wipe the brush off. I just wiped it off on my hand a little bit and now I'm blending the edge. Adding a little more over here. Wipe the brush, blend. Easy, easy. Now I'm gonna show you how you can use the apply side if you wanna get a little bit of product on your lower lash line. So we're cleaning off, we had shimmer on here, so we're cleaning that off. Let's go down here to Familia. I haven't used that one yet. Straight in, okay? Not on the side of the brush because it does have taper and it can pick up a little bit on the side. We're picking up right off the tip, tapping off excess. We don't wanna be overloaded with product here. And then, you're just gonna run that on the lower lash line softly. I feel myself kind of pressing a little bit because I wanna make sure that gets adhered <laughs> to my lower lash line and not just a cloud of dust, but look at that. Not too much. 
I don't like a sloppy lower lash line. I've got soft definition. Again, straight in, tap off excess, feel yourself pressing that brush onto the lower lash line. I'm not going big swipes because then, you know, there is a fallout risk, right? What if now we really go crazy, wipe the brush off. Let's go into blackest black with that same idea. Okay, excess. What if we stamp just a little bit of that on our upper lash line? Not in too far, but just kind of on the outside there. That's kind of pretty, huh? Up the intensity a little bit. I don't, it's so pigmented, I don't think I need to go back for more on this side. There's enough on the brush. That's kind of neat, right? What a multitasking gem this brush is. And kind of smudge over that edge. Feels like I just did black smudgy liner on the outside. Bravo, bravo, because now um, we're just gonna do some mascara and we're gonna do some lip color. I feel like using Superhero today because she's been lonely. Um, I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. The mascara is on. I'm glad I didn't bother getting that experience on camera. I thought I'll just whiz past that so it doesn't take too much time. But you know what? My Superhero, that thing is a total empty. Like it's really, really dry, but I did my darndest to get it put on both sides of my lashes. And then I layered up some Lash Paradise on top because there was hardly enough. I also did a light liner in the lower inner rim just to make myself look more awake. That's that ABH Duo pencil. Then for lips today, I'm gonna use this. First, I'm gonna let it slide down my arm. Then I'm gonna use this Lawless. Um, it's the Forget the Filler Balm. And this one is the shade Georgie. It's kind of earthy. And if you first get one of these, they actually feel like a little dry on the outside. And then they're kind of like Jones Road balms. <laughs> like you, you put them on and then they become really soft. And this shade is kind of like a peachy nude almost. I'm gonna use my Persona lip liner. I've had this for a while and I forgot about it. I was like, oh, I have a Persona lip liner. It's in the shade 90210. And it's kind of like brownish. It's really pretty. And I'm just using this in kind of like cleanup mode, just going around blending it into the lip look. Mm. And there's a little like kind of tingly cooling sensation that comes away from those Lawless products. I love that. So now we look at the face and say, would we do a little more powder? Because sometimes I like to go in at the end just with a little more like Kosas Cloud set. And I'm trying to make this be my drugstore Kosas Cloud set. Uh, this hard candy stay and slay and just get a little bit more of that on my puff, or you could use an additional brush, but we're keeping this to two brushes and a puff today. <laughs> so this is fine, just don't pick up too much. Sometimes even you can just take this without putting anything additional on it and just use the leftovers to do that. I'm a fan of the look, you guys, and I'm very satisfied with how it can all be pulled together with just these two brushes and my little triangle puff. And it wasn't as though we went bare minimum on the steps, you know? We actually did like everything on the face and we did, I think, a fairly intricate eye look, you know, with quite a few steps, and it all went fine. That's a line from one of those little blue truck books that I read constantly with vans and taxis, and it all went fine. Bubba is in a phase now where he just wants all of the little blue truck books that we own on repeat. Our favorite is Good Night Little Blue Truck, but then Little Blue Truck Leads the Way, the original Little Blue Truck. We have Valentine's Springtime. We don't have the Halloween one. And he brings that up every time. We don't have Halloween. The Christmas one, we have that too. That was the one that started it all. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this random little video and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.